What's up guys? It's your girl Kayla Janice and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. Thank you for stopping on by. Don't be shy. Hit subscribe because today I'm going to be showing you some of my meal prep recipes and ideas. Just what I cook, you know, for me and my family. Feel free to make it your own. Thought it'd be pretty cool to share because, you know, it's a new year. New year, new you. New year's resolutions. Let me help you out. We're gonna make some nice homemade oatmeal, some juicy Asian style turkey meatballs, and a crispy herb butter salmon situation thing. So let's get started. First the ingredients. So we have old fashioned oats, I have whole grain, apple cider, apple juice, nutmeg, ground cinnamon, brown sugar, which is optional, and lemon, um, you can use a lemon or lemon juice. The milk of your choice, we are dairy free, so I'll be using almond, salt, and you'll need two to three apples. Um, I wanted a combination of like sweet and tart, so I did green apple, honey crisp, and the uh, gala apples. Now when it comes to the oats, we're using pretty similar ratios as to what's already on the container. So we're gonna go three cups of oats to roughly four or five cups of liquid. Now, as far as seasonings, I will say I'm one of those people that don't measure out. I just go until I feel it is right within my soul, until my ancestors whisper in my ear and say enough, my child. Um, as far as a nutmeg, I feel like that was roughly about a teaspoon, and then the cinnamon, about a tablespoon and a half or two tablespoons, a pinch of salt. Um, if you're using regular salt, you'll want to double up. I was using kosher, so I was using very little. Here, I'm, I'm adding my almond milk, and then I'm gonna go in with a cup of water and a cup of the apple cider. Now we're gonna give this a good old stir before getting it onto the heat. Um, we're gonna get our stove on medium high, and once you'll start to see a little boil here, you'll turn it all the way down. We're not gonna cook these for very long. The key to creamy oatmeals, I believe, is stirring continuously throughout the cooking process. Like I said, they're not on here long. Just a couple minutes in, you're going to get to here, and this is the perfect time to take them off. The heat is still going to cook them through when you remove them and let them sit. And you remember that we're cooking to reheat you know, throughout the week, so you don't want to get them too dry. And voila, we have let them sit for a while. They've got on nice, thick, and creamy. I did forget to add um, brown sugar while they were on the stove so that he could you know, help dissolve. So while they're still hot, I went ahead and threw it in there. This is completely optional. If you're cutting, you may not want to do this, but if you're maintaining, you know, go ahead and throw the sugar in there. You don't wanna deprive yourself. Now meanwhile, while that's going, you could also have your apples started. We're just dicing them up and getting them into a bowl. We're adding cinnamon, another tablespoon or two. A lemon juice of a one whole lemon. A dash of salt. And about two tablespoons of the apple cider. Again, just for more depth. I also added a little brown sugar to taste, maybe about half a tablespoon to a tablespoon. And we're just gonna get this a good old mix up. Now I did cook the apples through here for roughly about 10 minutes. You're just going to watch them change in color. This is them about halfway through. Now here, they're perfect, nice and steamy. They've all changed in color. They still have a little bounce to them, a little texture. Now you can serve these up a couple different ways to keep it interesting and change it up throughout the week. I'm throwing some nuts in here for texture and a little drizzle of honey as a natural sweetener. Another way to serve them is with um, a little protein. So you can add some nut butter, peanut butter, almond butter, whatever you choose. I ate it here with some peanut butter and I'm a little extra so I went a little OD and added a couple tablespoons of it. 
and the sugar here i just really did it for garnish there's really no other reason i was just being a little extra because i did eat this while filming if you're someone who's on the go in the morning these mason jars will save your life when it comes to meal prepping um rob gets up super super early and goes to the gym and then goes straight to work so i go ahead and make his in mason jars and i layer them up differently too here i'm just laying them up as normal so just apples oatmeal apples oatmeal And I made him a couple. Some have the nuts and the honey. Some of them have a layer of peanut butter. You know, you can add different fruit, whatever. Now on to lunch and dinner. Now I do usually serve these meatballs with a brown rice or white rice and then a vegetable. But I am choosing to have my starch or my whole grains with the dinner portion or dinner recipe that we have. So I'm doubling up on the vegetables here, broccoli, zucchini, yellow squash. Um, you can choose to still serve it with the rice. I prefer it that way, but again, I needed to double up on vegetables at this time. Um, to flavor our vegetables, I just have a little olive oil, some kosher salt, and pepper. All right, our veggies are all washed up. They're good to go. We're just gonna go ahead and dice them up and throw them onto a sheet pan. And by no means am I professional, you know, so if I'm cutting wrong or whatever, it is what it is. I'm just going to drizzle the olive oil over all the veggies and I'm going to go in with the salt and pepper, give them a little toss toss. You know, mix them all up and then make sure they're in an even single layer before I put them into the oven. Now these are going in the oven and we can go ahead and get started on our meatballs. We need about a pound and a half of ground turkey. This is three, but we're using half. And breadcrumbs. I actually made these myself, um, and I'm gonna show you a little bit later. However, these are a very good alternative. Um, I just needed one that was dairy-free. Two eggs. Sesame oil. Soy sauce, you definitely don't need one this big. This is what I have and what I keep in the house. We use it a lot. And garlic, you can use fresh garlic or minced garlic. If there's one thing I'm gonna save time with, it's gonna be already minced garlic, so that's what I'm gonna use. And brown sugar, pepper, and kosher salt, yet again. Sesame seeds. And a green onion. And I don't think I showed the honey, but I also used honey in this recipe, so. All right, so I suited up with my kimchi gloves. Um, that's just what me and my family call them, but getting about half of that pack of meat into the pan, so it's about a pound and a half. Um, not necessarily to wear gloves, but I do have longer nails. So I'm trying to be, you know, sanitary, as most as sanitary as possible, I mean. But I'm going to go ahead and break up the meat and so as I throw the seasoning stuff in here it kind of gets more evenly distributed. I'm using a little bit less than a fourth cup of brown sugar. Um, some salt, I probably used about a teaspoon or two. Ooh. Pepper. I love that's probably like a tablespoon each of salt and pepper. I have a cup of breadcrumbs, which I'm gonna show you to make right now. This is the bread that I'm using specifically for this recipe or anything where you want a little bit more sweet. It's a honey oat bread from Kroger. Um, and I'm just taking a couple pieces. There's no rhyme or reason to this. Um, just taking a couple pieces and throwing them on the sheet pan. And you're just gonna bake it depending on your oven. You're just trying to dry it out, get it all nice and crunchy. Um, make sure it's just hard to touch so it breaks up even nice and evenly in um, our food processor 
while in the food processor I'm adding a couple seasonings I'm adding just some garlic powder and some parsley I do like using these breadcrumbs because I feel like they have their honey oat they're a little bit more sweet and then adding the garlic powder gives a little flavor so I think it adds to the meatballs like I said not necessary you could also add seasoning to the panko breadcrumbs or whatever but this is just what I like to do for different recipes I will use like different types of bread too it's just a very fast way to just take your recipes to the next level do things yourself but I'm not against store-bought breadcrumbs by any means I actually just did this when we didn't have any back to the recipe two eggs in here some minced garlic I went a little OD two tablespoons of do you probably just fine I did like three but that's because I am a garlic lover and we're just gonna give it a good old mix and once I mix these eggs in good I'm gonna go ahead and add some honey and some green onion the chopped green onion and mix it up again and go ahead and form them into the balls and while that's being done, I also need to go pull our vegetables. Which are perfection. So yeah, remember you're cooking to heat up. Don't overdo it. Let's go back to the meatballs. So now we just need a really, really hot skillet pan with some oil because we want to sear these bad boys before they go into the oven. So we're just getting a nice seal on them. I like them pretty, you know, crispy like a little char and then um yeah we're gonna get them on a sheet pan and them into the oven as well and you're only baking for a few minutes just to cook it through you do not want to dry out turkey do not now in the same pan that we used for the ground meatballs we're going to add these ingredients here um this is to deglaze the pan you still have the flavor in there you don't want to dirty up any additional dishes You want to consistently stir your sauce so it's nice, thick, and bubbly like this. Pull the meatballs and toss them into the sauce. And now to plate, I, like I said before, I'm doing double veggies versus having a serving of rice this time. Um, so I'm just throwing them in there as is. And we're going to garnish with some sesame seeds, drizzle a little bit of sauce, be good to go. My serving has three as to Robert who has four, you know, proportionate how you need to and what's best for your needs and, you know, your diet. The sesame seeds, um, you can toast. Sometimes I do for a more nutty flavor. I just didn't feel like it this time. And this garnish is also not 100% necessary. It's usually a better contrast against the rice, but it was just extra that I had chopped up already. Drizzle a little more sauce, again, for your needs if you can't handle those extra calories don't do it i probably shouldn't but i did and this is generally how i would plate at home um you can actually you know take it out of the container and plate it sometimes it's a little more fulfilling you eat with your eyes first you know Now for our juicy crispy salmon. Now for a crispy salmon, you need skin on boo. Don't be lazy, get the skin. Some asparagus, brown rice, some herbs, optional. I got rosemary and thyme, salt, pepper, and olimo. Garlic powder, which I'm almost out of. Like I told y'all, I love garlic, okay? Olive oil. Dairy free butter or butter, whatever you use. This is what I use currently. And then corn, however many corn husk that you need. I got five, two for me, two for Robert, two for baby. This rice, we're just going to cook per the directions. I have a rice pot. If you don't, you know, use the stove. That's look that up somewhere else. I'm gonna use this machine. I hit brown rice and I walk away and it's done. Okay. 
get our sheet pan and wrap it in aluminum foil because we're going to start with the veggies again first. Wash your veggies, get them all chopped and get them on the pan. And we're going to season these the same way. Feel free to use whatever seasonings you prefer. I'm good with olive oil, salt, pepper on the veggies. Every now and then I do garlic pepper or something, but you know, just plain old salt, pepper, or we good. And also be careful when you're cutting your veggies. I show you that there were a couple that I cut way too short, like this one. You know, asparagus is not a cheap veggie, so you don't want to be cutting off edible parts. There's two ways to cook this. I like mine crispy, so I'm just going to broil them for a couple minutes. If you're going to bake them, it's going to be a little bit longer. Now for our salmon, you're going to want to descale it. You may want to look that up as well if you've never descaled a salmon. But we're going to cut some slits into the skin. This keep it from curling up when it gets into that screeching hot pan when we go to crisp it. Um, like I told y'all, I'm not a professional by any means, okay? Um, but we're just going to pat this thing dry and we are going to cut the slits. Which was harder to do on camera than off camera. You see they're a bit, you know, my slits are a bit jagged. Um, but we're just going to hump the back and shake the rump. <laughs> and um, yeah, we're just going in with the slits. I think I just used the wrong knife to be honest. Like... It was way harder than it should have been and these slits because of the way I was angled I did them further out it's better to do them closer together like the first two pieces this one's probably gonna curl a bit um, I'm just going to push it down to make sure that it doesn't but yeah we're gonna drizzle some olive oil on that thing get it you know into the slits you want that flavor there too All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and season this side of the salmon, a little kosher salt, pepper, and we're gonna throw the herbs into the slits as well. I kinda go every other. This is gonna give some aromatics. It's gonna give more flavor. This is actually probably only my second or third time at making salmon like this. Um, I was really into a crispy salmon that I had out to eat and I was determined to make it at home because I usually make salmon without the skin. Um, so it was, you know, this is a new thing for me but I didn't want to share it because I loved it and you know, it's good to just switch it up. We am tired of Cajun or blackened salmon or just a salmon lemon pack, you know, like I do those oven aluminum foil packs. But this is a good switch up. Um, and it's very, very fast, so you could already have your sides done and then just make this for dinner, like a fresh, nice, crispy piece of juicy salmon. You can't beat that. I used to not even like salmon, but I think it was just the experiences that I had before. They were too fishy, but now that I'm older, I love, love, love a good cut of salmon. Now the cast iron skillet needs to be super, super hot. We're coating this pan in our dairy-free butter and getting our salmon skin down. You see me apply a little bit of pressure um, so the skin comes firmly in contact with the cast iron. We want crispiness all around, everywhere. And I'm going to season, I'm going into season this side of the salmon that we didn't get to. So we're also flavor all around, no spots missed. Now once your salmon is in this pan, do not touch it. You can actually see it cook. This is about a fourth or halfway through. Let it get to like three fourths and then flip it. But do not touch it. You want the skin to get crispy. That's the point of this and all that descaling work you did. I'm adding more butter to go in and baste it because I'm about to flip. And boom, we got our nice crispy salmon. We're just getting them all on flipped over. The herbs you can remove after if you know you need to, but we're just gonna go ahead and baste it. Not too much, because you don't wanna get rid of your crispy skin. 
but we definitely want that flavor. Now, while you're basting, it's the other side is gonna go ahead and cook through. Remember, we cooked it three-fourths of the way in the beginning, so that side just needed to sear just enough. You don't wanna overdo your salmon. You want it to stay nice and juicy, especially during meal prep. Salmon is something you can easily ruin if you cook it too long, just like turkey. We're gonna go ahead and get this off and get this onto a rack so it can dry and make sure that it's crispy. We don't want it sitting in those oils. Meanwhile, we're swapping our veggies. Our asparagus should have already come out the oven at this point. And we got the corn husk. We're gonna throw those in the oven because those are gonna take about 30 minutes. Which, when they come out, everything's pretty much done. You're just gonna peel the husk back, like here. I just threw them into the bowl, a little garlic powder, gave it a little shake, and plated. And we are finished. We have our nice, crispy, juicy salmon. We're gonna throw a lemon in here. When you heat that up and squeeze it, that lemon, more aromatics, more flavor. If you do overheat your salmon in the microwave, it's gonna add some juices. You know, we have a nice, complex meal here. It's not about depriving yourself. We still have our whole grain. We have some good fat. We have our veggies. We have a little starch, you know. We have a little bit of everything. Here is an example of how I would plate. And you know, these are pretty full portions. This is an example of if me and Robert are doing intermittent fasting to where we're only eating like two bigger meals a day, more complex meals. Like I said, the fats, the whole grains, etc., etc. And here I'm just showing you that the leftovers, like some of them I don't throw prepped into containers I just throw the leftovers into their own so you can mix and match during the week keeps it lively you don't have the same exact thing all week and that is it guys we made a quick breakfast we made a nice fulfilling lunch we made a yummy juicy balanced salmon dinner you know these are just like I said meal prep ideas and recipes that I use in my home make them your own switch them up let me know what you do to switch them up and how you try them so I can try them you never want to keep having the same thing over and over I hope this helps you and your new year's resolutions and if you really really like this give it a thumbs up leave a comment below let me know what other type of recipes you would like to see I love you guys thanks for watching Mwah.